Shabbat Shalom Senbet Salam. This is the 38th weekly Torah or read, reading and feeding, and we continue to discuss the wanderings of the Beit Israel, the years of wandering in the wilderness. And at this particular portion of our Sabbath uh, studies and the reading, the 38th, we are still in chapter 16. And let us go into the gainsaying of, of Kore, the gainsaying of Korah, and give a synopsis from the Schofield Study Bible footnote. Now, we understand that when the earth opened up and swallowed up um, the sons of Kore, uh, uh, Datan, and Abiram, and all that pertaineth, their family, and all their things, that they, that they descended into the pit, or, or Sheol, or Seol alive, and that this Sheol, or Seol, was the Amenta, which is explicated and explained in the, in the Egyptian wisdom. You understand, Moses was learned in the wisdom of the Egypts, and was a man mighty in word and deed. So to comprehend in the proper context, we have to go beyond the typical um, Eurocentric white Jewish rabbis and their speculation, understand where, where they're correct with what they say concerning, concerning commentary on Torah, on scrolls and scripture, but also recognize what they ignore. And what they ignore is the Kamite, or the ancient inner Africa black mythos or wisdom keys out of ancient Egypt and in particular from its root in Ethiopia. And this is what makes our approach to it not just unique, but truthful and correct and full, the so-called Orthodox Judaism, so forth and so on. But basically the Jewish uh, ceremonies and some of their practices are correct you understand, especially more correct than what the lost sheep have been doing in their plantation um, niggerisms and ignorant so-called um, version or the perversion of Christianity has been passed down. The blonde hair, blue eyed, um, um, rouge and makeup and lipstick wearing Jesus, a feminine Jesus that most Negroes, not just in the Americas and the Caribbean, but many so-called African Negroes worship this image of the beast, which is a, a whole other matter. But what we're discussing here and what we're touching on here, further touching on here is is this 38th weekly Torah reading or the Orita Minbab, the, the Kuffel, the portion, which is called Korah, Korah, or Bamarinya and the Amharic and the G is Kore, Kore. As we have discussed, the brief summary, it contains four major this uh, Sabbath reading and portion and feeding that covers three chapters of the book of Numbers covers Korah's rebellion, the plague that was upon the rebels, Aaron's budding staff, the staff of Aaron that, that budded as well as the duties of, of, of the priest and the Levites. But What's important for us to discuss is this gainsaying, the gainsaying of Kore that we find in, in Jude, verse 11. In Jude, verse 11, it says, Woyo lacho be kayel men geda hedowalena sila demoazim le bela arma sihiteta rasacho wina salfo set it tawal be koreim me kawem. Eftawal, woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward and perished, perished in the gainsaying, or more correctly, in the opposition of Kore or Korah, Bekoreim Mekawem. F. Tawalina. So Jude, Yehuda, Melikit, 
Uter Asara An because there's only one one chapter, one Mi'raf to um, Jude, the book of Jude, the epistle of Jude. And in verse 11, it says, Woe to them, Woyo Lacho, Woyo Lacho. They have perished in the gainsaying, Bek Oreim Mekawem at Eftawal. The gainsaying or the opposition, the opposition of Korah. What was this rebellion all about? This rebellion against Musa's Yahweh given authorization and authority. It's, it's, it's much like what still goes on even to this present time. We have the same thing occurring back in the 1930s. You understand in the Ethiopian World Federation among black people, uh, and particularly the gainsaying of Marcus Garvey. This incident, the gainsaying of Kore or Cora can be likened to the gainsaying of Marcus Garvey. That the one who was sent was Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bayan. Dr. Malaku Bayan. He was the one who Nagus Nagest, our kinsman redeemer, had sent, not Garvey, not Marcus, Messiah, Mosiah, Mosiah, you could say it like you want to say Messiah, but he's not the Messiah, you understand? And he's not the one that the king of kings upon the throne of David sent. But there was gainsaying then, and there's gainsaying now. But we should learn from this as a warning. This is not an imitation not to be imitated and and it's important for us to understand that the wilderness was a necessary part of the discipline of the redeemed of the redeemed people but not the years of wandering not the years of wandering the years of wandering was due completely to the lack of faith and the lack of response and the lack of response ability of the people, much like our experience in this present time, having Shashimani, the land grand for, for more than 40 years, and seeing what has happened and moreover what has not happened, and you will find much gainsaying of, of chorus, of a lot of chorus down to the present time. But still, what is this gainsaying? all about what is this gain saying all about the schofield study bible reference bible has a interesting footnote on page 188 it says that the gain saying of of of, of Kora, it was the intrusion into the priest office it was the intrusion into the priestical office into the priest function it's like everyone calling themselves them a priest i and i a priest or prophet or, or king or it, it's the same sort of intrusion the same sort of gain the same sort of gain saying or 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 opposition opposition to the one whom jah has chosen to jah's anointed to jah's elect to the elect of god in hebrews chapter 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 five in hebrews chapter five let's go to hebrews chapter five for a moment hebrews chapter five because in 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 the book of hebrews or the epistle of hebrews chapter five it, it teaches us a very important principle right here chapter five at verse um at verse four and this principle, Bamarinya, Askermo Bamarinya, in the Aronim, Begezi Abehera, Kate Terra, Bekera, Mane, Makabruna, Le Rasu, Yemia, Wasid, Yellem. And no man taketh this honor to himself, but he that is called of God. No man should take the, the, this priest thing. You know, being a priest or in the priest function or service, 
as an honor to themselves. But this is what a lot of folks do, pastors, preachers, and so forth and so on. In the Aronim Beegazi Abihir Katet Arabek Ar Manam Kubruna Le Rasu Yemi Wasid Yellem No man taketh this honor to himself, but he that is called he that is called of God, he that is called of Egezi Abher Lotusabhat, to him be the praise. He that is called of the sustainer Yahweh. You understand? As Haron or Aaron was, was called. Now, this is intimately connected to um, Yekore uh, Me. Mekawim, Mekawim. This is this is linked with the gainsaying of Korah. It was an attempt to create a priestly order. It was an attempt to create a priestly order without the divine authority. It was an attempt by Korah and 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 others uh, supporters and so forth and so on to create the 250 chieftains and and princes famous folks well-known races you know a council of a whole bunch of them 250 you understand they're well known everybody you know so and so right yeah yeah i heard about him okay yeah okay cool but was he called and is what he is he is ministering to us is it according to the teachings of his imperial majesty is it based on the Mets of Kedus? this is the key right here so what the gainsaying of Korah was all about was an intrusion into the priestly office it was an attempt to create a priestly order without divine authority an attempt to create some sort of priestly or order without divine authority and now verses 9 to 10 in hebrew this very same chapter says uh and being made perfect he became the author of eternal salvation get this to all them that obey him and being made perfect he did what he became what the author of what eternal salvation to who to all them that do what that obey him so those that disobey him what is he then to them He's not the author of eternal salvation. So by by vir virtue of opposition, it is an eternal damnation, eternal damnation to those who want to disobey him. You understand? Because he being made perfect became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey the key word, underline that, highlight that. You understand? Write it a hundred times in your heart and in your mind. To those who obey him, called of God, called of Egezi Abihir, of Ha Elohim, of Hashem, and High Priest. After the order, after the appointment, the Shumet, after the election, the Shumet, called after the order of Melke Sedek, of Melke Sedek. See, that's the authorization right there. there. There's the authorization. There is an order already. You don't have to make up any new things, you know, to appeal to these people and those people. All those are human, are, are human nonsenses, are human madnesses. They're just a part of the fall, the fall state of consciousness, or at best, they're part of a mixed consciousness, like the mixed multitude half civilized you understand you jaw a little bit but you still got a little bit of the world you're trying to please the modern analog to the gainsaying of Kore would be the nicolatanism nicolatanism that we find in revelation chapter 2 verses 6 and 15 in revelation chapter 2 verses 6 and 15 so let's go there revelation yohannes arai chapter 2 verse 6 it says negergin ye ale 
ine degmo yema talawena ye niko lawiyanina sera tel tahalina but this thou hast that thou hatest you hate the deeds of the nicolatanes which i also hate so christos the mushiach is saying that this you have return to your first works but 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 you got this right that you hate the deeds the doings of these folks that spiritually are identified as the nicolatans which the moshiach which christos which the king of kings and his christ also hate but who the hell are the nicolatans because we're supposed to, they're hateful. They're supposed to be hated. You understand? Who, who are these folks? Well, first of all, what's in the name? Nico. Nico is, is, is the Greek word. This is the Greek word, right? Nico Lawianen Bamarinya. From the Greek, Nico. Nico is like Nike. You know the sneakers? Nike sneakers? Nico. Nico means to conquer. And Laos, Lao, Lao means the people like um 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 laodiceans in a sense um the people the laity so nico means to conquer and laos means the people or the unlettered folk the regular folk the folk who can't read scriptures you understand or who don't know scriptures you understand so the regular folk this is an ancient authority for a sect there's excuse me there is no ancient it says there is no ancient authority for a sect of the nicolatanis in other words you can look up all you want you won't find any set of christians that say yeah we are the nicolatans you understand so this is a spiritual matter so what what the scriptures here in revelation is doing is taking a word an idea a sense and for the initiate when they come across this word yeah nico lawian nico lawian mano nico lawian what the who's that what does that mean first thing you go to the meaning and nico mean to conquer the laos or the unlearned people the regular folk and this is what the gainsaying of kore of kora was to affect against moses you understand against Moses to establish an alternative, you know, denominationalism. Well, well, like another church, like there was a main church. You understand? Now they wanted to establish their own, their own little church, their own little something. And and what's interesting that idolatry and stuff like that always begins much in the same way. You have a God revelation; it's clear with signs and wonders and everything. God chooses a certain one. Then after a while, people go along with it for a while. Then they start to say, "Oh, well, what can we do? Can, don't, isn't God? God could talk to me too? I, you know, I'm I I know Jah. He's not the only one. You know, so from so on. This how this is how the game saying your core." this is how it began so the word is symbolic and it refers to the earliest form of an idea of a notion you could say of a feeling in the sense of a priestly order a, a, a feeling of a clergy a feeling for 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 for, for clergyness you understand they want a clergyness a feeling for religiousity you understand religious osity, not true spirituality, but religiosity, you understand, which later divided an equal brotherhood. What eventually happened in Christian in Christianity was that this equal brotherhood where even those who are in the function of apostles and teachers and pastors and preachers, they are still our brothers. They are still in, in, in the in the spirit of Christ on an equal level with us but we honor them for their spiritual gifts and how they minister these gifts to us but it's not like they're on any big high pedestal or whatnot like you see in a lot of a lot of um religion and in particular christianities you understand the denominations of christianities of counterfeit christianities today so that equal brotherhood was divided and this is where it became the so-called ecclesiastical kind of orders. And Matthew chapter 23 verse 8 speaks on that equal, that equal brotherhood that was now divided by the, the Nicolatanes or Nicolatanes into two different classes. Upper class and lower class. In other words, priest class and regular people class. These are the priests. Ooh, ah, 
You know what I'm saying? And you just regular folks. You know what I'm saying? You're just regular folks. They know God's word. Whatever they say goes. You don't question them. Don't ask to look, read the Bible for yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you do, they're going to get very offended because don't you know they're the preacher, they're the pastor? You understand? Don't you know that? What in the Ephesus, uh, Ephesus was deeds. What in the Ephesus was deeds in verse 6 of Revelation chapter 2 had become later on as a development of the ages of early christianity when these seven churches and we have revelation we're seeing how the church got from the time of christ went through seven distinct periods or phases to this last phase of the church that we're in you understand or, or i think the laodicea the laodicea judgment of the people or the people are judging whatever they feel so we went from the 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 nicolatanes where it was just a notion at first you understand it was basically the idea of deeds had now in pergamos in pergamos it had become a doctrine and this brings us to our second our second um our second quote right here in verse 15. Let's just scroll forward. Revelation chapter 2 verse 15. Now it says, Indeed who? Yeah, Niko lawiyanin na timaharit. Inda nazia yamiyat abok ua sawoch. Ka'anta degmo alu. Ka'anta degmo alu. So hast thou also them that hold the teachings, the doctrine, of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Now, anything that you find the Almighty says He hates, pay attention to that. You know, what I mean, just, just, just pay a little, pay a little extra attention to that. You understand? Because He doesn't, He doesn't go around to say He hates everything. He's a lover of of humanity. Our Father. You understand? Our our elder brother. Our Christ. Our God and King of Kings. He's a lover of humanity. But there's certain things that He does hate, and one particular thing that he hates is this Nicola Tans thing this so-called priestly assumption priestly class and priestly assumption and this is the modern analog to the gainsaying of Corre that we find the division of an equal brotherhood into the clergy and the laity dividing the brotherhood between the clergy which become like untouchables the very same thing that Christ himself in the, in the same chapter of Matthew, chapter um, 23, you understand? He, 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 he basically, um, he, 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 I won't say he raged on them, but he, he exposed them. He, he, he blasted, he, he blasted them. You understand the 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 priest and the religionists and all these these holy moly holy moly roly folks the same kind of folks we got running around today in Christianity where you can't even you can't even question them even even based on the Bible and the Scripture because they're the clergy they're unassailable. You understand? People believe that that God chose them like like he chose Moses when that's not the case. You understand? It's clear they're not in the divine authority. They've, they've already gone off script. You understand? So how can they be the lead actor and they're not even in the script? You understand? They're off script. They're making up the ad libbing lines and stuff like that. And this is what you get in a lot of counterfeit Christianity today without apology. A vastly different thing from the due recognition of ministry gifts now there's a whole different thing when we talk about those who have been given ministry gifts and how we are to recognize one another spiritual our, our spiritual eyes have to be open so we can recognize that one one another who have spiritual gifts that these are basically ministry gifts and we should give them due recognition of their ministry gifts because these gifts have been given for the for the, the 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 church to say for the household of his faith for the society of his imperial majesty or of elders and deacons it is different in that 
case because there are elders and there are deacons in the church but too much of um what has gone on in um the ecclesiastical and and nowadays uh christianity on so many levels is 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 out of the script of god and when we look at where it's at it is in the the level of the gainsaying of of of, of core in other words they unlike Korra and those who went down into the pit alive survive in this time of grace. So we see now what the rebellion of Korra was about has really picked up steam over the last 2,000 years or so. And we have this confusing picture of, of, of counterfeit, you understand, so called Christianity in the world, which is not in the authority of the bible but is in their own authority or worldly or a sense of worldly authority and this is this is why this particular study here in this 38th uh weekly torah portion or or sen batawi uh, minbab this sabbatical reading and then we move on now as we move on we find out that there was a plague as well. There was a plague as well. Not just only the opening of the ground, which vindicated Musa and Moses' divine authorization, but there was a plague upon the rebels. We find that the next day, the, the whole Beta Israel um, community, they railed against Moses and Aaron for bringing death upon God's upon God's people <laughs> you know in other words they were upset about what they had seen with the ground opening up and so many ones who um who who belonged to uh you know the rebellion had died they were upset that their rebellion didn't work so they railed against Moses and Aaron and a cloud covered the, the Mishkan, or the Dinquan, the tabernacle, and Yahweh's presence appeared. Ha Elohim, he told Moses to remove himself and Aaron from the community. Remove themselves from the community. And this is in um, Numbers chapter 17. So that Elohim might annihilate them so that he might destroy them and, and 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 you know what you know what happens next right next moses and aaron falls on their face and they pray for the people they pray that the almighty do not this thing you understand moses told aaron right to take the fire pan put fire from the altar and incense on it and take it to the community to make expiation, to make an, an offering of expiation for them and to stop a plague that had begun. The plague had already begun. And Aaron or Haron, he did so. And we find this in Numbers 17, 11 to 12. And Aaron, he stood between the living and the dead and he halted the plague. But not before 14,700 had died, we learn in Numbers chapter 17, verses 13 to 14. Now, the real interesting overstanding is when we go to the Egyptian wisdom, the Kamite mythos, and see the relation in the wisdom that Moses was educated in and was learned in and was mighty in word and deed to see what this peculiar meaning of this 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 verse that we have that we have right here in um verse uh verse 13 verse uh it says 13 um actually 12 and 12 and 12 and 13 and the children of israel spake to moses saying behold behold we die we perish we all perish whosoever cometh anything near to the tabernacle of the lord shall die shall we be consumed with dying now they seem to be in a little more of a um 
a little more of a of a of a of a repentant of a repentant um tone here but the verses in 48 um the 48th verse of chapter 16 where it says and he stood between the dead and the living and the plague was stayed he stood between the 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 dead and the living and it says that the plague the plague the plague was stayed the plague was stayed let's just get this part right here and um verse 43 and moses and aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation and yahweh spake to moses saying get you up from among this congregation that i may consume them as in a moment and they fell upon their faces and moses said to aaron take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on incense in other words put on some ishans burn some ishans and go quickly to the congregation and make an atonement for them for there is wrath gone out from yahweh the plague is begun there is moses says there is a wrath very interesting choice of words that there is a wrath that is gone out from from yahweh verse 46 let's go to verse 46 for for a moment musim aronin tinahina was said come and say we are with my side at the rig bet it on a match a murder bet what am i have a room a fat in a was said oh i saw tesseria lacho wimaka exiavi here rafita kuta what to alina make a safita jamro al allo kutera arba sabata arunema musa yende tenagro wat na wena westo ode gubayu mekakela rote in the home mek safatu be hizbu mekakela jamro neber itan ma chamre le hizbu ma asa tesere lacho and arun took as moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation he ran to the midst of the assembly and behold the plague was begun among the people notice it doesn't describe what the plague is was it a leprous plague what kind of plague is it you understand and he put incense or it on ancient and made an atonement for the people kutera arba cementa be mutanna be yawan mekakala qome mek safitum tekalakala and he stood between the living and the dead and the plague was stayed and the plague was uh how can we say the plague was um uh not defended against but it was kind of like you could say resisted in a sense uh to collect uh it was forbidden it was forbidden to say like it was it was forbade it it was forbaded and in kutaram arba zetain be kore mikniyat ka motuta leila be mek asafutu wa ya motuta asara arata shi sabata meto nebaru now they that died in the plague were fourteen thousand and seven hundred beside them that died about the matter of 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 kore of kora el kutera hamsa verse 50 arunema wode muse wode megananya den kwana de jafa temele temelese mek asafutuma tekalekele and arun returned to moses to the door or the gateway of the tabernacle of the congregation or more correctly to the to the the door of the the media the tent of meeting he returned and the plague was stayed now the next portion of this which has a lot of import here even in a 
in, 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 in a Christological, in a Christological, a Christal, in a Christal sense or Christological sense is Haron's, Aaron's rod, Aaron's rod that budded. And what is the meaning of Aaron's rod that budded? Because this is another another lesson here from the years of wandering concerning Aaron's rod, Aaron's rod that budded. Elohim told Musa to collect a staff from the chieftain of each of the 12 tribes of the Beta Israel. Inscribe each man's name on his staff. Inscribe Aaron's name on the staff of Lewi or Levi and deposit the staffs in the tent of meeting. The next day, Musa, Moses, entered the tent and Aaron's staff had, had sprouted. It, 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 it blossomed and it bore almonds. It sprouted, it blossomed, and it bore almonds. And this is in chapter 17 of Numbers. Ha Elohim, the true God, instructed Musa, Moses to put Aaron's staff before the, the Ark of his covenant or the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabot, to be kept, to be kept as a what? A lesson to rebels. Another further lesson he was giving to those rebels and those who would rebel to end, to cease and desist from their mutterings and their vain verbal putterings against Ha Elohim, against Jah, against Rastafari. But the Beta Israel, they cried to Moses, We are doomed to perish. Isn't it something? <laughs> it's like they say you could take a what do you say you could take a nigga out the ghetto, but you can't take the, the, the ghetto out of the nigga. This is this is this is this is identifying who the true beta Israel are. If we look at their attitude, their character, their disposition, their gainsaying, their disobedience, even in, in spite of great blessings, even in spite of these great blessings, they still have this sort of an attitude. But what is this all about? You understand? Now, we know the children of Israel, they spake to Moses after all this was done. They're like, in the hole, in the motalin, in the tefalin, who lachinim, in the tefalin, in the motalin, in the tefalin, who lachinim, in the tefalin. Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. Behold, we die, we perish, right? But ye mik arbhulu, what a egezia be here, madaria, ye mik arreba, ye motal, bewunu, who la china in a motalinin? Below a tenagarut. Whosoever cometh anything near to the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. Shall we be consumed with dying? See, now they began to think vainly. They, they still are not really learning the lesson at, at, at heart. But they're thinking like, oh, we can't even go near that. If we go near that, we're going to die. You understand? Whoever goes anywhere near the tabernacle of the Lord, you understand? Tabernacle of this Yahweh, you understand? We're going to die. Are we all going to be consumed with dying? You understand? Are we all going to die? Is what they said. So it's very clear that in this beautiful um, simile, of Aaron's rod, a further example of Aaron's rod, the rod that budded, they still didn't get it. But exactly what didn't they get? Well, Schofield has a good note right here concerning Aaron's rod that budded. They tell us that it's a type of the Moshiach, or it's a type of Christ in resurrection, who is owned, owned of God as high priest. So Christ, the son, in resurrection, he is owned of God. In other words, God owns him 
as according to the function of high priest. According to the function of high priest. So Christ is our high priest, but Christ is owned of God, his father, our father. Aaron's priesthood had been questioned. This is what was questioned in the rebellion of Korah, of Korah. So God himself will confirm it. God himself will confirm it. And we learn this in verse 5 of Numbers chapter 17. In verse 5 and, and, and D, um, and, and, and D, and then below, uh, and D him, Yohanan. Yemaret Uhuta so better ta quate kut alech Benantem lai Yemia Goramera muabachu huna Ye is a rail in a lijo chama Goramerum Ka inezenda tefalo. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom and i will make to cease from me the murmurings the complainings the grumbling of the children of israel whereby they murmur against you so this is this is where the almighty is 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 confirming and affirming whom he has chosen so each of the tribe heads the the chief and the alec oach they brought a perfectly dead rod a completely dead rod like a stick you understand a dead stick a dead rod but ha elohim the true god hashem he put life into aaron's rod only he only put life into aaron's rod the rest of them remained dead and aaron's rod it it, it 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 sprouted it, it, it blossomed and it bore fruit it went through those 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 living stages so all the authors of religions have died everyone who authored a religion any religion in the world has died isn't that true christos among them Christ also died. Yeshua died. But only the Moshiach, Yehoshua, was raised from the dead. And furthermore, was exalted to be a high priest. Or better yet, to be the high priest. The high priest. And it is Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 as well as chapter 5 verses 4 to 10 that that confirms this and we're going to go go there um just to complete this particular teaching um here hebrews chapter 4 let's go to 4 and 14 first 4 and 14 and this is very interesting to understand that all the authors, everyone who authored some sort of a religion, you understand, or whatever is called a religion, they have died. Christ or the Moshiach, Yeshua, also died. But it was only Yeshua, the Moshiach, who was raised from the dead. And it was only Yeshua, the Moshiach, who was exalted to be a high priest so it's only i and i adenenu only gay touching jesus christos the glory of his father our father abba kadus kadus abatachin who is like unto aaron's rod the one who he has confirmed and the one whom he has chosen verse 14 right here in chapter chapter 4 and 14 it says in Gdi Besamayata Yalefe Tilik Alik a Kahenat, Ye Egazi Abher Lij, Yesusa Salalen, Senatena Haimanotach Nena in Tabic, seeing then that we have a high priest, a great high priest, 
that is passed into the heavens. Yeshua, Jesus, the Bain Ha Elohim, Ye Egeziavi her lich, well de Egeziavi her, make us, make I and I hold fast our profession. This is King James translation, hold fast our profession. Bamarinya, sentena hymenotach ninenet ebik. You understand? Being firm, our, our, our living faith, our high amen. Our high amen, high amen note, our high monote in the tabic. Let us keep, let us protect, let us guard the living, the living faith. Let, then, then let's go to verse uh, chapter chapter five now to catch up on the next verse. This is an important verse here. So recognize, recognize, recognize. You understand? It, it doesn't really say seeing as to see with your eyes, you understand? But 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 almost like to say recognizing that we we have a, a great high priest that has passed, you understand? That has passed into the heavens, you understand? To the to the great summit, you understand? Of of the mount, you understand? And who's seated up there? Yeshua, the Son, the Bain Ha Elohim. So let us keep. You understand? Let us keep the living, the living faith. Because, yes, he died, but he was raised up. You understand? And he was chosen and confirmed just like Aaron's rod. Just like Aaron's rod that budded. And, it, and for those who study some of the Ethiopic uh, teachings, such as the Kibber Neges, it's very interesting how much uh, in the Kibber Neges, or the glory of the kings, Queen of Sheba and only son Menulik, uh, Budge's translation of it. Um, but if you read in there, you'll find there's a lot of reference to to Aaron's rod. And in Ethiopic Christianity, to Wahido, you find there's a lot of reference. There's much reference to the symbology of Harun's rod. So these these um, symbols that are and 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 and, and, and emblems and the symbology that we find in the Torah readings. And the weekly portions, the key significant um, 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 figures, types of speech, uh, uh, myths, to say uh, mysteries, uh, mystery keys are myths. You understand? In the true sense of the mythos, Aaron's rod is also based on a particular mythos. You understand? So in chapter 5 of Wada Ibrawiyah, from verses 4. To ten, it reads, "In the Aronim beegezi abihera katet arabek aramanim abkubruna le rasu yamia wasid the yellem, and no man taketh this honor to himself, but he that is called of Ha Elohim of egezi abihera lotusabhat, as was Aron, in dihu Christos adegmo alik ekahenata lihon rasu nala kabrem negergin." Ante Lijene inne zare awella jehalo yalo arsuno. So also Christos Hamushi glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said to him, Thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee. In the Zihima Belela Sifra de Gmo. Ante in the Melka Sedek Ashumet Lizalalema Kahine Yalal. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melka Sedek, after the order, the appointment, the election in the Melka Sedek Ashumet Kutar Sabat. Arsuma be sigawa warata kamota liadino, what a michilla ka bertua chuhetina ka inbagar, salotina milajana karebe, egaziabi her nema selemefratua tesemalet. Who 
in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears to him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared cement Though he were a son, though he were a son, the Bain Ha Elohim, yet learnt he obedience by the things which he suffered. Now, no, 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 notice this right here. This is speaking of Christ, isn't it? It's speaking of Yeshua. Isn't this what what Hebrews speaking of? It's saying that he 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 feared. He 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 was heard in what he what he what he was fearful of. Right? It says that he 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 learned obedience. He he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So if 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 he learned obedience by the things he suffered, and what are these little things that sometimes even even I and I, some of us people complain about things we go through because we walk this walk and and seek to talk this this talk and and to do the work of the one who has called us, and and sometimes we go through mixed up moods and attitudes and enemies and friend enemies and a lot of whole bunch of worldly stuff. You understand that we figure, oh, I'm suffering. But it says right here, Minimlij Bihon, even though he were a son, that he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So if he could suffer, our Lord and Savior, then who are you? You know what I mean? That's the question in your next prayer time you should ask. Who am I? You understand? Like David asked that. You understand? All the spiritual greats have to ask that, who am I? But see, some of y'all think you know who you are, and, and that is the problem right there. It could be a challenge if you overcome, but that is the problem right there. Kutero chas et en eskia aser versa 9 to 10 to conclude this portion right here. It says, Katefet amemba bechwala. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all that obey him. Eternal salvation to what? To all. But well, suppose there's a few that don't obey him, but they go along with those who obey him. Will he be eternal salvation to them? You know, there's people that will ask those kind of questions. And based on the authority of the word, no. No. It says, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. And the key here, you see, the key here is the hearing. The Shema. Shema Yisroel. Shema Yisroel Yahweh Eloheinu Yahweh Ahad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. You understand? And was hear this, feel this, love of all your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. Called of God, He has been called of God to, be, to say that He has been named to Terra, to Terra of Egeziabi Her. A high priest for us, the high priest after, after the order or the appointment of Melchizedek, and because this is all in the same context, and we're going to cl conclude um, this se the segment on 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 Aaron's rod that budded, but. I think this is a the Holy Spirit is saying to just go forward. So Kutera Asara An says Sila Arusum Yemina Nagaro Abizu Negaralen. Joro Chachuhuma Silefezazu Bek Ala Lina Taragumo Chinkno. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered. This is concerning Melchizedek's headache and concerning Lika Kai Nati Yesus Christos Yeshua, right? He says of whom we have many things to say of this Melchizedek's headache. And this order of Melchizedek, and hard to be uttered, 
it's hard to say these things. You know, we're going to talk about the ancient Egyptian wisdom, the mythos, go back to Kemen. People say, oh, are you going back to Egypt? Egypt, they worship idols. You understand? I mean, they might worship more idols than Israel. Anyway, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are what? Dull. Seeing ye are dull of understand, uh, 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 dull of hearing, it says, dull of hearing. But it's interesting where it says hard to say, it says, In other words, in order to, 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 to interpret, to translate, and to interpret, for us to interpret and translate these things, It's interesting, it says, because there's more than one way of you could besil besil linataragumo. We could show you a picture. You might you might get it. You understand? But now by word, it's hard seeing that the people are not really listening. They're not keenly listening, keenly understanding this. Kuta asara hu leta kagizewa yetanessa astamari wo chalita hono wa siga bachu an so sel egzia wi herak alat mejemeria yallo wena yehtan netna temherit and yasa temrachu indegna yasa falgachu khwalna yemi yasa falgachu hum wotet no inji tenkara migbay dellem ay dellem ay 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 for when for the time ye ought to be teachers as tamari watch a little honu wasi gavachu ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god on the soul sala egazi ab herk alat majamaria yalowena ye hit Anatina Timaharit and the Yasa Tamarachu and Degna Yasa Falagachu Halina and are become such as have need of what milk, what it, and not Tankara Migga. You understand? Do you? Probably not, because that's why it says you have need, you need to get on the mother's milk again. And this is what Torah, in that sense, is that the basic readings is that milk, is that starting point. Remembering the Sabbath and the Torah readings, Torah feedings, the wetet. Wetet kut rasara asara sost. Wetet yemigat hulu hitana silahone. Yes, it in a kala yawuk imna for everyone, everyone that useth useth is kind of a strange word right there when you look at them hard, but it says for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. Everyone that you know like a baby or mama titty. Everyone that useth milk is unskillful. In the word of righteousness. Why? For he is, for he is, hitan silehone. He is a babe, not even a child. He's not a child. He's not a lid yet. He hasn't become a lid yet. He's still a hitan. When we are born again, we're not lid yet. We are hitan. You understand? We're, we're still a babe. You understand? We're still a babe. Kutarasara ara to conclude this chapter, chapter 5 of Wada Ibrawiya. Enkara Migabgin Melkamuna Kufuina Lemelayet Be Serachoa Yelemede Lebuna Lalacho Le Fitzumana Soochno. But strong meat, solid food, belongeth to them that are of full age. To them that are of full age. Even those who by reason, by reason of use, usage, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Tenkara migabgin melkamuna kufuina lemalayet. To be able to, to uh, discern the good and the evil. But Saracho. Besaracho and in their work, yet lemede, ye lemede, they are familiar. You add a te to it, you have telemede, you you schwa the te, you have 
til or you you are the te you have tal like talmud telemede telemede to gain the familiarity here is translated by king james as reason reason so when you hear about the jewish talmud you understand what they do is exercise their reason you understand their reason in this word that's all when they come from the shiva the yeshivas and they're brought up in the yeshivas um the 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 jewish the jewish people you understand they can more than likely excel in many different types of occupation because some of that basic knowledge you understand they, they've gotten off the, 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 the mama's milk in that sense. You understand they're dealing with solid food. They, 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 their senses, you understand, or the labuna, which is the consciousness, besaracho yelemade, labuna la lacho. You understand? They have a, a certain type of consciousness that is what we would call mature, lefitsuman. Lefitsuman sawochno for those who are are complete you understand complete vis-a-vis -vis the teachings in other words they have a a a a a good a good foundation they, they you're always learning one thing you even if you have the good foundation you complete you still always are learning certain things based on the the foundation the principle that you that you already that you already that you already know and that you already possess and this is a very important area um of uh, uh of scripture because what hawaria if it is uh paulos uh, people believe it is paul that wrote this though there's some dispute of who really wrote the book of hebrews but it's clear that this was a pistol to the Jude the Jews, you understand the Ethiopian Hebrews, the black Jews, and those who were even converts to Judaism at that time, to minister to them the virtue and the value of Christos, of Yeshua, of Jesus Christos as the Messiah. And it's interesting that verse uh, 14, which ends chapter 5, and verse 1 and 2, which is a couplet that begins chapter 6, are connected in a thema. And we don't want to leave off without touching on this particular theme. So you should see the end of, remember the chapters some say, and there's some truth to it, were inserted later on. So sometimes you might find a theme that doesn't end at the end of that chapter, but actually goes on maybe into or is continued in the next chapter or in some cases goes on to the first couple of verses in the next particular chapter but the editors at the time that they edited it chose to um you know chose to put the chapter mark so when we look at verses one and two of what ibrawian miraf said this we find this which connects with the 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 theme the subject matter being discussed in chapter 5, where it says, Silesia Christosin Neger, Mejameria Yeminagaruin Kala Titen, Wode Fitzame in the Heed. 